Potatoes in sacks of compost or organic matter of some kind is a great option if you don't have access to much garden. And it's fascinating too, to just see what you can get from that amount of material, how many potatoes to put in. So we're going to explore a few different options in the course of this video, which will keep coming back. So this is now the 20th of April. It's a very good time for planting potatoes. Here we can have a frost until the middle of May. That's still three weeks time and more, which will burn the tops of a potato plant. It doesn't kill the plant, but it, it sets it back quite a bit if you get a, a bad one. Something else we'll see later in the video is putting a bit more compost on top, but I'm not doing that. Sometimes it's recommended you start with almost nothing in there and put your potato in, which you can do. Uh, but it's quite palaver because then you've got to keep the compost somewhere else. <laughs> well, I'm actually starting with quite a bit. Like this one has got 40 litres in already. That's nearly nine gallons. I'm going to put the potato in quite deep, basically, and then watch how they grow. And if I see potatoes developing near the top, then I'll put some more compost on top, which in traditional language is called a thing up. I'm planting two potatoes in each sack. And these are my own Charlotte. It's a second early type and they've been chitting quite a lot as you can see actually they're in a sack for a bit too long and that meant that the chits or sprouts same thing shoots got a bit longer than i would normally like them to be but it's fine actually for putting in a sack like this so i'm putting two in each sack and this first compost is potting compost the one i use for propagation i know that it's really good nutrient status there's plenty of goodness in there that will certainly grow a big plant and i'm going to put the two seed potatoes in it's about that level there so pretty deep because I'll give plenty of room for oh, a big bit of wood <laughs> I'll just check that out. Uh, for the actual tubers to develop on top there's going to be a lot of growth of all of these and I'm going to move them and slightly space them out near the fence when I've finished to allow for that it's something to consider if you grow potato plants in sacks. It looks very economical of space, but the plants need a lot of room. This sack contains green waste compost, we call it, which is municipal compost from the local composting facility. And you can see it's also nice and black. And a bit more woody though than the uh, moorland gold potting compost. This is two year old wood chip from a, a Johnson Sioux actually bioreactor, which I didn't look after brilliantly, uh, but it's pretty nicely decomposed, quite old wood chip, not sieved. So there are still some quite big pieces of wood in here and I'm not expecting this one to grow great potatoes, but I could be wrong. Now we have a classic well rotted old probably one year old cow manure can't be too sure i got it this morning from the local stables and you can see it's still a bit of straw there the horse is bedded on straw when one says manure it, there's an assumption of some bedding involved at some point and it feels nice and warm there that is one that's very interesting actually that's one advantage of sacks like this to get rapid growth you can get some if they're in sunlight you will get faster growth this is pretty wet and sticky in there. You can see by my hand, not so nice to handle as some of the other ones, not least this one here, which is the four millimeter sieved wood chip. So that's three year old wood chip, which we sieved very carefully. It took quite a long time actually. And in other trials we're doing of it, it's showing pretty nice result. So again, two potatoes going in there and that's a pleasure to put my hand in. It feels really, really soft. In fact, of all of these compost, it's probably the nicest one. Also, because the four millimeter sieve is pretty fine, and that means there are no bits of wood in there, as opposed to this one, which is my homemade compost, which potentially or should be a bit richer than that, you might have thought. <laughs> and we didn't put it through the four millimeter, we put it through a 12 millimeter sieve, so that's about half an inch. So it's not so quite so much now. That does beg the question a bit, you know, this is not a, what I'd call a scientific trial in that we're not, not every parameter is the same. And what I'm looking for and want to show you and share with you is the variations 
and signs and symptoms and <laughs> tendencies and you know what we can learn from the different qualities of these compost that will be the last one i'm trying to roughly match up these size wise now this one <laughs> look what i'm finding in here is bindweed and soil i left some bindweed on top just to make that point that this soil this from homemakers there's a pile of it over there from when we were doing some building work it's got quite a bit of bindweed root in it so it's not the end of the world just be careful i'm going to put it on the compost heap uh, this morning when we were loading up a wheelbarrow with it <laughs> we did find quite a bit and there we go potatoes going as deep as i can get my hand in um, but this one i'm going to put more soil on top i didn't want to put too much in at the moment partly because of the weight of moving it around and finally we have some quite fresh mushroom compost when i say quite fresh it's about a month since it was delivered at which point that it was steaming off the lorry and went up 60 centigrade in another trial we're doing it's not doing quite so well growing plants but now that it's a month old and you can see with mushroom compost too this sort of whiteness too that's that's a nice sign that's fungal decomposition still happening and i'm putting the potatoes in there as well too in that sack there's one more thing i'll do actually is watering check that they're all fully moist like this wood chip one i noticed is not fully moist i'm feeling really light and i'm cutting in the bottoms of these bags um, holes like there to make sure there's drainage these sacks of compost in theory they they would let out excess water if the compost got too wet but i filled one with water this morning very little drained out if any <laughs> so i'm cutting sacks and making slits just to make sure that water can drain out that's really important you don't want your plant sack like a pot filling up with water and it'll just roots will die so i'll make sure that the water that i give is is correct it'll be mostly me watering because even if you get some rain it's not falling on a very big surface area compared to if it was a potato plant or two plants growing in a bigger area so there we are see you again in early summer it's now nine weeks since we were here planting these potatoes and you can see they have grown <laughs> the growth though is very variable and that's what's so interesting about doing this and i'll take you through sack by sack in a minute I'll just say briefly at the introduction, there's one big and rather horrible surprise to come. And there's also where some of these are growing a bit weakly or going a bit yellow. I'm going to feed, I am feeding these sacks. I've just started putting a bit of chicken manure pellet in because we can already see at this stage which of these different composts have not enough nutrients to take the potato through to a worthwhile harvest. Let's start with the woody mixes so this is three-year-old sieved wood chip sieved to four millimeters and it's doing all right until recently this was pretty much the strongest looking plant but now you can see by the color it's starting to fade and that's why i put some of this chicken manure pellets on how much to put on <laughs> well, it's a bit of a guess to be honest but I put on enough that would just cover the surface of the sack and then that gradually soaks in, they're dry as, as you water them. And I did the same here, but a little bit more for the slightly younger but not sieved wood chips. This is two year old wood chip in slightly larger pieces. And look at the plant, it's not that strong. I'm not too hopeful of great potatoes there. However, we have put the chicken manure on and I've got a, a bucket of <clears throat> a little bit slightly better <laughs> younger actually wood chip but it's more fine and it's about eight months old we're going to put it on top and see what difference that makes because we're starting to see in one or two potatoes nearing the surface but not yet but this is homemade compost from my heap about eight nine months old although by now it's nearly a year old and that has been very slow to start it's exactly the same as we saw in the trial of the spinach in pots but now it's starting to look really strong and you can see by the color it's nice nutrient profile likewise this one which is mushroom compost which also did very well in the spinach trial and that has been likewise a little bit slow certainly compared to this so you can see it's a smaller plant at this stage but a much darker color 
So we'll see how that translates into potatoes. This one impresses me. This, this one is soil, just homemaker soil. And all I can say is it's doing all right so far. To my right, we have green waste, one year old. So that's compost from the local facility that we've kept for a whole year before putting some in this sack. And that's looking really strong. That's been one of the strongest. And you can see it's growing fast by how limp the leaves are. It shows me I forgot to water them this morning. But actually that's quite good because it, it's an indication with, with watering, um, how much do you water these? And I've been amazed how little I've needed to water them. I keep an eye on them and lift them as well is a good sign. If they feel very light, that's a sign of needing water. And probably no more than twice a week. And at the beginning, I didn't water them at all for the first three or four weeks because they were hardly growing and it was raining a bit. But when it does rain, the water goes less into a sack than it does onto soil. You've got a smaller surface area. So from now on, I will be watering more. Behind me there is the strongest plant of all at the moment, which is growing in the potting compost, the Morlon Gold. So that's kind of not surprising, it's potting compost, but it's kind of also, it's designed not to last much more than a month. So again, I put a little bit of chicken manure on that. And we're gonna put a little bit more compost on quite a few of these. Like in this sack here, the strong one growing in the green waste compost. I was just having a little rummage earlier and I could see a potato quite near the surface. And that's a sign that, that it's worth putting some more compost on top. And it will support the stems as well. Now, the last one I've not mentioned is very disappointing and but also really educational. It's the horse manure. And clearly that horse manure has got the horrible weed killer pyrolid, probably amino pyrolid is the active ingredient. I have made a video about this. I, I know from the emails I get that a lot of people this year are suffering from it. It's in horse manure products that are sold. This weed killer sprayed on the grass, which the horses then eat. It goes through the horses, comes out in their manure. People say it doesn't harm the horse. <laughs> well, make your own conclusion. But it's in the manure and it doesn't go away until it's broken down by sunlight and also by soil microbes. So in a sack like this, it's not going to degrade at all. And that potato is, well, we'll see what it's like in a month. We're going to come back in a month to have a look at all these and we'll do the final harvest. And I think it'll be fascinating. So I'll look forward to seeing you then. Five weeks later, this trial has been always interesting. And there's some dramatic changes now. Like, look at this one. That's the one-year-old green waste compost, which has clearly finished growing. This is the potting compost potting and container compost from Morland Gold. It's doing all right. It's quite dry actually, I noticed when lifting the sack, but we, I've been reducing the watering because we're just about to harvest. So we're gonna show you homemade compost looking strong. The wood sacks, sacks with wood, have greened up quite a bit since putting in the chicken manure. This is soil. Well, it kind of looks all right. It'd be fascinating to see what's in there. And look at the, horseman here that's the we think the weed killer effect we'll see if there's any potato not as I'd want to eat them this one's looking possibly the strongest of all in terms of top growth that's mushroom compost done really well so we're gonna tip out each second turn harvest the potatoes put them in a bucket with a name then we'll weigh them we'll post those weights and we're gonna refill the sacks with the same compost, give it a good water, and then put leek plants in there. Leek plants, three and a half months old already, just to see on going what, what difference might show until the end of the year. That was so interesting. And I'll just quickly show you the actual weights and the harvest we got and give an impression that I took from it. The bioreactor compost, 0.42 kilos, not a lot. Very nice potatoes though. And there were some lovely worms in that compost. I would say that's still a working compost. It's not ready to grow potatoes yet. 
you know, all this is here, it's a snapshot of the progress of the compost at this point. And some of these harvests were taken a little bit soon with the leaves were still green. Soil, well, the soil did have a little bit of chicken manure as well, but 0.785, it's not bad actually for just pure soil in a sack. Not so easy to handle though, really heavy. Noticeably the heavier sack, soil is much heavier than compost. Uh, but if, if all you had was soil <laughs> and all you had was sacks, you, you could do that. Then we get, we big jump, uh, we get into the middle bracket of much higher yield and this is the mushroom. I thought the mushroom would have been more, but <clears throat> in, against the mushroom, we, we took it too early really. It was still growing very strongly. Beautiful potatoes, some of them are still quite small. Maybe I'd not watered it quite enough. The, the watering was very little in the first part of this trial. And recently it's been a lot like today's 30 centigrade, 86 Fahrenheit. And I think I've been a bit slack in keeping up with the watering to be honest. But the, you know, the, the tops were not wilting, but I could have watered a bit more. Very similar to the mushroom, a little bit more than that was the homemade compost, my homemade compost, 1.41. You can see the nice potatoes. You know, these are kind of new potatoes. These are all Charlotte, same variety. When they get bigger, they're good for storing. I'd say at this stage, they're probably better eaten within the next few months. And within the next week or two, they'll be quite sweet. What do we got here? Yeah, this is the sieved wood, 1.51. Actually, not that much different to the previous two. Having said that, the, the more medium-sized ones and, and fewer small ones. And compared to that, the one-year-old green waste, which had a lot of small ones, had a slightly higher total. This is the second highest total. So this one-year-old green waste, it didn't have anything added to it. You see by the blackness of the potatoes, it's that very dark compost, 1.55 kilos. And most of all, shouldn't be surprised really, but it's a nice confirmation. It's the potting compost from Morland Gold and Quite a big jump, 2.1 kilos. <clears throat> and some nice sized potatoes. This has got some of the bigger ones in this trial. When we grow Charlotte in soil here, we get them quite a bit bigger than that. But in sacks, you, you wouldn't expect that. You know, that's obviously, that's a very worthwhile harvest. So, <laughs> so far so good. We're now gonna learn even more about these different composts by re-wetting them and transplanting leeks today, 18th of July, into each sack, multi-sown leeks that were sown in April. And that'll, we'll put in a sequel video, so do keep an eye out for that one. <laughs>